Welcome to the Jordan and Kristen Rickard Show. The world is falling apart, but you don't have to. Join Jordan and Kristen as they discuss the challenges that face us in our decaying world every day. God has a plan for you to have victory and to be a light in the darkness. As the Bible says, those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Now, here's Jordan and Kristen. All right, welcome to Jordan and Kristen Pray for America. Listen, uh, it's no secret, these are troubling times, and I will admit, I'm troubled by them too. For people my age and younger, we've had a pretty sheltered existence in this country. We haven't had a Cold War or a World War or a Great Depression. We haven't had a Cuban Missile Crisis. We didn't have Vietnam and the drafts and things like that. I never had to worry about any of that stuff. But now we have something that we can choose to worry about if we want to. But we can also choose to convert our worry into prayer. And that's the goal of this show. And that's what we're going to do tonight. Uh, there's a saying of which I'm especially fond. It's in Romans 117, that the just shall live by faith. Now, that doesn't mean that we ignore doctors and public health officials. Of course not. It just means that ours is not a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. That's 2 Timothy 1.7. The world needs the rest of us to keep it together and to pray not just for ourselves, but for everyone else as well. The World War II generation is called the greatest generation because of what they came through. They didn't want to go through, but they had to. And that's where we find ourselves right now. But while this challenge can seem like a giant mountain, remember that God tells us that we can move mountains if we have even the faith of a mustard seed. All right. So that's our prayer for tonight. In fact, Kristen, I think you have a a shirt, do you not, that says, uh, um, caution, I'm armed with a mustard seed and I know how to use it or something like that. Oh, yes. I have a a saying. um, I actually have, and I even have a bracelet with a mustard seed in it. And it's amazing to see how small a mustard seed actually is. If you know, it's, it's, uh, if it, it, God, you know, Jesus said, if the faith of the mustard seed to think of how small that is, but Mm -hmm. I can't even imagine of what, what we can do with even bigger faith. Right. So that's going to be one of our themes tonight. We also have a couple special prayer requests we're going to get to. Um, But Kristen, why don't you kick us off? All right. God, we just, we love you so much. And we know that you are in control. And like Jordan said about, you know, we could be plagued by worry. I I think the, the biggest thing that most of America and this world is infected with right now is fear. Fear is the injection from the enemy right now being trying to to make its way throughout the world. And if you turn on the news and if you look at the things, it can become very easy to start to get anxious and start to get fearful when you look at that. But I think he mentioned also in Romans, well, there's another verse in Romans that says to set your mind on the flesh or what's going on is death, but to set your mind on the Lord is life and peace. The spirit is life and peace. And God, that's what we need in this world, peace. And I just, I really believe that there's always going to be something to worry about, to choose to worry about, but there's always going to be something that we can choose to praise you for, God. We have a choice. And it's really interesting because in these times we buckle down, we realize how fragile life is and how our life is really in your hands. And sometimes in life when things are not as quote-unquote tragic or, or there's not real quote-unquote problems going on, we make vain imaginations in our head and we make fears and, and we, you know, the enemy causes us to worry about the what-ifs or what could happen. So throughout our life, whether it's something like this is going on or not, we have that choice that choice to worry we have or we have that choice to praise you god so we choose to praise you god because you are faithful god and it doesn't matter frankly it doesn't matter what the world says it doesn't matter what it looks like you, we have that faith of a mustard seed to know that you're going to pull us through god you're going to pull us through better than ever before as a nation as a world and as individuals and as families god god on my heart tonight is the fact that I feel you're asking us to ask you to pull back the curtain, God. Mm. You know, I think, of, I think of certain times in my life where I was worried or anxious about something. And then a couple months later, 
that prayer was answered or, or something happened. And I thought, oh, gee, I wish I really hadn't have been so fearful. If I had only known back then what I know now, I, I wouldn't have been so afraid. Or if I had known that God had it all together. And then I remember, oh, that's faith, expecting what we do not see and, um, and, and putting our trust in you. It's really trusting you and showing how much we trust you, God. And we do trust you, God. It's, it's being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. And so, God, you pull back the curtain and show us certain things because in Jeremiah it says that you, if we call to you, you will show us the great and mighty things which we, we do not know. So you want to show us amazing things, and you may show us things, but for the things that you don't reveal to us, God, I pray that we have the faith to believe you for those things. The things that are not yet materialized in the tangible form, I pray that we, we have the faith to know that you are working on our behalf. You are working behind the scenes. You are working behind the scenes, God. You are setting the stage, God. And you, everything is truly, truly in your hands, God. God, we thank you. We thank you that it is and that's, that everything we need, Lord, you're restoring. I, I also was thinking tonight about restoring. I was thinking about anybody who's listening to this. I just feel like God wants to tell you that he's going to restore things to you. It could be something as simple as, oh, gee, I had this event planned during this time and it's going to be canceled because of all that's going on. And, and, and that causes you to feel maybe robbed. Maybe you feel robbed in your life. Maybe that causes you to think of other things that you've been you felt you've been robbed from because it says the enemy comes to steal and rob and destroy. But you know what? God has come to restore. He's come to give you life abundantly. So if there's something you feel robbed of. I don't know. Maybe something in your childhood. Maybe something. Maybe maybe a failed marriage. Maybe maybe a relationship with a child. Maybe finances. Maybe moments. Maybe maybe a moment where you felt robbed of your joy. Maybe, maybe you were all excited about something and a situation or something just took the wind out of your sails and you felt robbed of your moment. I just want to encourage everyone tonight that God is restoring those robbed moments of your life. God cares. God cares about the things. God cares about your, your hurts, your insecurities. God cares about what you have felt like you are robbed of. And I just see that the, there's like, like a checkbook, like God has his checkbook and he's waiting to write out. He has checks that he's writing out to you that you can cash in. Yes, finances, if, if that's a hardship for you, but that goes beyond material blessings. He's writing out checks of joy and love and peace and hope in your life. He's writing out restoration of family relationships and so I, I don't know who that's for tonight, but I just want to encourage you that God is a God of restoration. He's returning the joy of his salvation. He's returning and restoring all the years the locusts have eaten, all the things that you have felt that were taken away from you. God's not just restoring it to be as it was before, but better than it was. And I believe that this season, the same thing, the things, the losses and the things as, as confusing as this time seems, that if we pull back the curtain, God's going to show us what he's restoring to us through the season. God, I thank you for that word. I thank you that you are restoring and you are a God of restoration. I think you're a God of hope and joy. Lord, I just think of you just like that story in the Bible about the prodigal son that you, that, that parable about the prodigal son coming home and I see you as that father with your arms open when the prodigal son ran. You run, you run towards the prodigal son, Lord. You run with your forgiveness. You run with your love. And I see you running towards your children. I see you running towards us with open arms because you just want such closeness, Lord. And so in this period of time where you are restoring, you're running to us with restoration. You are rushing towards us, God. That's the kind of God we serve, a God that is rushing towards us in this world where we feel the rug is swept out from under us. You are rushing in, God. 
you're rushing in like a beautiful flood, Lord. I'm reminded of a song that um, in, in church as a little girl I remember singing. And I, I love all the old hymns. And um, actually, this wasn't even an older, older hymn. I just remember singing it as a child. And um, we were talking about praise tonight. And so I just, it's, I'm caused to reflect on it because I feel that as we welcome God, as we welcome what he wants to do, that all of that restoration is just going to come down on us like a beautiful, beautiful avalanche of love. And so I just remember the lyrics were something like, um, as the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You, O oh Lord, are my heart's desire, and I long to worship Thee. You, O oh Lord, are my strength, my shield. To You, O oh Lord, may my spirit yield. You, O oh Lord, are my heart's desire. And I long to worship you. Lord, I just, I just, as I sing that song, I just feel your peace. And I pray for your peace for every person listening to this and even those who are not listening to this, God, and all their family members. I pray for your peace in this, in this time. It's an, it's an ironic thing. I feel that this is going to be, this, this time there's going to be more revival and more of your peace than ever before, God. Because, you know, in times when we think we have this false sense of security and we think everything's taken care of, those are the times I feel like we, we worry about the what ifs and we worry about what's going to happen. But in a time where we really do have to buckle down and find you and find your peace, we're going to find your peace in the midst of this storm, God. And we're going to take that mustard seed of faith and watch it grow and grow and grow and watch as you're going to create a harvest of ref- restoration in our lives, God. We praise you and thank you in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. A great prayer. So, God, before I forget, certainly we want to get to the special prayer request we had today in particular. And I'm not going to use this person's name because this is public and even if I just use the first name, it would be kind of obvious who it is. But, you know, there's a, a special friend of mine who has been through a lot in the last few years. Uh, certain legal issues came up, which were no fault of her own. And, you know, the consequence of which was the family had to move at least one time, as far as I can remember. And, you know, out of out of their home, had to sell their home and the kids couldn't attend their public school anymore, had to go to a different school. And I think now... The whole family is living either with with her in-laws or her parents. I forget which, but the bottom line is it's it's not an optimal existence under any circumstance. And now with this whole mess and the economy cratering really in a way that I've never seen or experienced, there's a lot of question marks. And yet her marriage has stayed together and her faith has remained strong. You know, she cries out to you. And before this this whole chaos, I remember telling Kristen two or three years uh, weeks ago, I said, you know, we need to learn how to how to pray desperately when when times are good. Because when times get bad, you don't want to be approaching God like a stranger. Well, times are pretty bad right now. And God, we come to you not as strangers, but as people who you know. You call us by name. You chose us specifically. You call everyone. But we responded. We come to you faithfully every night. And we lift up this friend of mine here who's asked you for special prayer. We know that you like difficult situations. You're glorified in miracles. That's why you told Gideon, send your 30,000 person army home. I only want 300 people so that everyone will see that I did this. Well, God, you know, we need a miracle now. And, and there are people, and I'm not just talking about my friend, but more broadly, There are people who will say, well, we don't need a miracle. We need scientists and we need doctors and people like that. Yeah, we need those people too. And those are, I don't mean to minimize that at all. God bless those people. But, you know, we've seen these 
borderline apocalyptic projections about, you know, 150 million Americans being infected by this disease. And, you know, 1% of those dying, a million and a half to 3 million people. That's what science tells us is going to happen. I'm not willing to accept that. So I need a miracle. Okay. On top of the science, not necessarily in lieu of it, because I don't know that faith and science are in conflict with one another, but, but I do know that where science ends, faith begins. That's right. And so father God, we know that you can heal our land. We know you can heal these people. Mm -hmm. God, we have the faith of a mustard seed. I know Kristen does at a minimum, and so do I. That's why we do these prayers every single night and have been for, I guess, nine months or so. God, we just ask for your provision right now, both for my friend and for anybody who's listening to this. And like Kristen said, even the people who aren't listening to this, we pray for protection. We pray for comfort. I know somebody, somebody today was posting on Facebook how they lost a friend to this coronavirus already. Another person I know just got it. As far as the person who just got it, God, I'm happy that he's making a recovery, but I'd really just like to put an end to people getting it in the first place. And as far as the person goes who, who lost his friend, I know your word says that you are especially close to the brokenhearted. And so I ask mm -hmm. that you be close to him tonight. Yes. But God, we don't want to turn these prayers into just like a shopping list or a complaining session or anything like that. Your word says that we enter your courts with thanksgiving, or we enter your gates with thanksgiving, I should say. We enter your courts with praise. And so, God, we thank you for everything that we have. We thank you that we have a roof over our heads and we have food to eat, that we're healthy. And, God, for those people who aren't healthy, we stand in the gap for them. Yes. We praise you that you are a good and kind and merciful and loving God, that you are slow to anger and quick to forgive. And I don't pretend to be able to divine why this is happening, and I'm sure that an, an infinite God has infinite reasons, but God, I can say that I haven't, I don't trust you less because of it. And I know Kristen doesn't That's trust right. you less because of it. That's right. I just want to end with this. I know in tough times, you have this kind of paradox because on the one hand, you a lot of people run to God, but then they also question God at the same time. They run to God out of desperation, but they, they question God saying, well, how could a good God let this happen? Mm. And I, I reminded something I heard Joel Osteen say. He said, he said uh, God doesn't expect us to be like super Christian or just he doesn't expect us not to have doubts enter our minds. Mm -hmm. I, I'm reminded of something that uh, Peter said about that. He said, I think it was Peter. He said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. That's a perfectly legitimate prayer. All of us have questions. All of us look, you know, see the news and we see the awfulness that happens, not just with this virus, but on a regular basis. And we, we wonder, God, why is there so much evil in the world? Why, why do children get sick and, and things like that? It, is, it, is not, it does not diminish our faith. If anything, it elevates it to say, God, we believe. Please help our unbelief. And so that's yes. one of our many prayers tonight. And that's what I'll leave you guys with. Amen. We pray these things amen. in your name. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Good prayer, Kristen. Do you have anything you want to add? No, I think that that covers it. Just that um, I just pray God's blanket of peace to cover everyone tonight and for the days ahead. And the best is yet to come. There is a hope and a future and we can be sure of that. Amen. Remember, Noah was uh, trapped in that ark for a year. So for us being in, you know, in our comfortable homes, which are climate controlled and aren't filled with smelly animals and things like that. <laughs> for a few weeks, if not a few months, it's not going to be the end of the world, but it's still important to pray for. All right. Well, thanks for joining us tonight, guys, and we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great night. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to follow Jordan and Kristen Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and iTunes. And remember to tune in next week and every week on Tuesdays at 845 on WMCA The Mission, AM 570 and FM 102.3. Amazing grace.